So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back to another one of those Silent Night in Pieces segments, a sub-series of the podcast under the stairs where we take beloved classic remake Silent Night from 2012. We break up into five-minute reviewable installments. I get guests from all over the world to join me on those five minutes, and then I take the order and I muddle them up for no real reason at all other than my confusional entertainment stasis. I don't know, that was a funnier sentence in my head and when the words came tumbling out I realised I have nothing, I have absolutely nothing to fall back on here, not even my looks, because they are going with age. Um, On this episode we are reviewing minutes 35 through 40, minute 35 will open with Santa opening the lid to the chipper, that sounds a lot more fun than it actually is, and then we'll end with the sheriff saying, oh yeah, you call this survival? That's our five minutes. Joining me on this episode is absolutely no cunt. This is a solo episode. This is Duncan, double Duncan if you will, reviewing this for you. I get some death in this. So I'm a happy camp. I get one of the best deaths in this. I get the chipper scene. We go 100% full Fargo in this and that makes me smile from ear to ear. So let's get into it. These episodes are always short when it's just me because I don't have any guests stealing airspace. You know what I mean? The guests know. Anyway, let's do this one. It opens with Santa opening the lid to the chipper and uh, we pan round and we see our now one-legged topless model trying to get away from the killer. She's now one-legged because one of those legs was chopped off with an axe. Uh, Santa picks up the severed leg and then grabs a model who tries to fight him off. He basically struggles a little bit with them and then he carries them both to the chipper. Kind of love this bit, he throws her leg in first. Um, as if to say, well this isn't getting reattached. Um, and it goes right through it and then Santa grabs her, slowly starts to lean her in. The camera's being uber leery here so we have a shot within the chipper basically looking up our snatch um it's it's classic creative filmmaking and she's slowly pushed down and see what you will about silent night when it needs to give you the stuff it gives you the stuff and in the case of this one the gore and practical effects in this are brilliant uh, we get blood spray back up over santa's mask and white beard and it's kind of phenomenal it's quite a slow death as well it's surprisingly mean but she's gone. She's no longer with us. Uh, back at the station, McDowell and Giles are looking over the blackboard. It uh, is a kind of a, a red web board with lots of pictures and lots of writing where they're trying to chart out what they think and who they think the killer might be. It's full of details. Remember, this is their HQ now. Um, meanwhile, at the desk, the deputy is chatting with Brenda. And the deputy says, well, 
The prints came from a Cumberland workbook, size 13, so it's definitely not Jordan. And Brenda says they didn't deserve what happened. Deputy says, well, somebody thought differently. And Brenda says, what do you mean? And Deputy schools her right now. She says, what I mean is, this wasn't like a random, spontaneous act of violence. Whoever did this had a plan. And whoever had a plan had a reason. And Brenda says, well, who do you think could have done this? I mean, <laughs> you're going to ask that question. This movie's going to be short. Deputy says, do you remember that article you were reading to me about Christmas? Making people crazy? Holiday murders? Google that. Uh, that's a call back to the other segment that I was on, actually, which might not have aired yet because of the order release, where basically Brenda is queen of Google. Uh, she gets up, and just as she's doing that, the phone rings, and she answers, Sheriff's Department? And then she kind of looks over and she says, It's Crazy Betty. She sounds a little crazy, something about blood. Giles kicks in with, Yeah, a Bloody Mary, most likely. She's been drinking, guaranteed. And the phone hangs up and then there's another phone call that comes in Brenda answers that again she says Sheriff's Department and Giles looks at it and says Crazy Betty again and Brenda says no a Mrs Morewood over in Elkilid um, and Deputy says I'll go and check it out and the Sheriff says no wait I'll go over to the Morewoods I know the family Branamore you go down to that motel Giles you meet her there don't know why they can't go together but that's fine uh, and Brenda says on the phone yeah ma'am right away so Giles turns to the sheriff and says, I really don't feel well enough to be fighting crime. I'm probably best served just, you know, like, holding the fort. And the sheriff turns around. Classic, classic fucking McDowell here. In between two accents, he's like, No, your best served protecting the good citizens of Cryer here instead of your own sorry ass. So man up. So we then cut to Crazy Betty's motel where there are bloody footprints. Giant bloody footprints. Um, the chef arrives over at the Morwoods and uh, goes up to Mrs. War Morwood, who was the woman that had had the heart condition. We've spoken about her in one of these segments that may or may not have aired yet. Uh, he says, what happened here? And Mrs. Morwood says, she's dead. The chef's like, no. Mrs. Morwood, casually and very cold about her daughter, who has died, says he skewered her like, like a little pig. The chef says, what? Did you see him? I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. I promise we'll catch this maniac and he'll pay for what he did. And Mrs. Morwood says, oh, it's all my fault, Sheriff. The Sheriff's like, no, 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 no. And she's like, all I wanted for Christmas was some relief. But I was talking about boarding school. I didn't mean this. I didn't want this. And the Sheriff's like, it's all right. It's okay. And Mrs. Morwood says, I deserve to go to jail. And the Sheriff says, no, no, no. And Mrs. Morwood says, Date me in, Sheriff. And he says, Stay here. And he gets up to walk in the house and she's like, oh, Wait, wait, don't go in there. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And then we walk in and you're expecting the most vicious. We've seen severed bodies, we've seen severed heads, we've seen a woman go through a chipper. You're expecting to see something fucking savage. What we see is a girl lying peaceful with a bit of fake blood on her chest. And that's literally it. Actually, the, the, really, the reveal of this death is pretty shitty, if I'm being honest. Um, and uh, the sheriff gets on the radio and he's like, Branamore, Giles, come in. We have another homicide on Euclid. A 14-year-old girl appears to be speared. What do you see? And the deputy says, two dead here. There's a woman, Goldie Willis, and a Frank Forrester. He runs a website, soft porn. And the sheriff goes, porn, drugs. When did this town become so sleazy? The deputy says, Ever since the mill closed, which I'm sure was a rhetorical question, but she answers it anyway. She says, Ever since the mill closed, they do what they gotta do to survive. The sheriff says, Oh yeah, you call this survival? And that's the end of the five minutes. I get a chipper death. That makes me very happy. I also get bibs in this scene. I get bibs and a chipper death, which, I mean, that's... That is, like, spank material, if ever there was some. Eh, some terrible dialogue here. Some awful acting and some shoddy dialects here from one Mr. Malcolm McDowell. But we love him, we love him, we love him. Um, yeah, that is that is legitimately my five minutes here. Uh, my favourite thing about this episode is the chipper death of... It's fucking great. 
Uh, ladies and gents, we are doing these every single day of this month. We're dropping you an episode first through to the 24th before we take a couple of weeks off to celebrate some time off with the family over Christmas. Um, so yeah, there will be another one of these episodes coming your way tomorrow. So until then, take care and I'll speak to you next time.